All right, let's talk pencil pressure. Pencil pressure is really important in any drawing, but it's especially important when you're working on drafting film. And that's because the graphite, when added, can get very, very dark very, very quickly. So one of my best tips I have for you is to hold your pencil further down the barrel so you're not putting your typical pressure as you would if you were writing. We're all very used to holding our pencils this way, and therefore we can take the graphite too dark on the drafting film too quickly. So hold your pencil back like this, and I have 2B lead in this pencil, and I'm barely letting the lead touch the surface of the drafting film, and I'm always working in the direction that the fur is going that I can see in my uh, reference photo. And right now I'm just trying to lay down values. So I don't want it to be too dark, I don't want it to be too light, but I want to be able to erase it. So once I add a little bit, I grab my watercolor brush and smooth it out. Now, because I didn't take it too dark, I can still erase it with my kneaded eraser. And it comes right off. And that's how you add the texture and start building up the, the look of the fur. And then what I would do is, with just a little bit more pressure, so you can see I moved a little closer down the barrel, because now I want a little bit more precision in my mark making. And I'm just going around all of the lines that I just made. This just gives a little bit of contrast to the highlights. And then if you have a darker spot, add even more pressure. And then of course, I like to smooth it out a little bit. That just, smoothing it out just makes the lines a little softer when you don't want a really defined line. And then I'll go in and erase. And you'll notice a lot in a lot of my work that I go back and forth, back and forth, adding and subtracting, adding and subtracting. And it's just my method and I hope it ends up working for you as well. Now, just to give you an example of what happens when you've taken the graphite too far, now, I used a lot of pressure to get this nose, the inside of his nose, really black. I had to, so I could saturate the drafting film with the graphite. But let's say I use that same pressure on a different section, um, and then I needed to erase it. This is what happens. Barely anything. So you can see the difference between just tapping it over here, and it takes up a lot of that graphite and tapping it over here and barely anything happens. You can see it's just starting to come up. Now, if you are really in need of removing the graphite because you've taken it too far and the erasers aren't doing it, you can. this is where the magic eraser comes in. So it comes in a big sheet that looks like this. You can get it at the grocery store. I also have a link for you to find it on Amazon. What I do is I just slice it into small pieces like this. You can see I started using this one. And then when they get really, really dirty, they end up looking like this, kind of sad looking. But anyway, I actually really like it when they start getting soft like this because you can start to bend them and turn them into some shapes or use the corners. Um, but anyway, let's, I'll show you what happens when you erase something that's really, really dark. So, I can redraw this, so I'm just going to show you what happens. Gone. All that area I just lifted right up. And what's nice about the magic eraser is that it's not like the other erasers where you've heard me talk about if you go at the drafting film too hard with an eraser or the white eraser or the mono zero, it disrupts the tooth of the drafting film and then it makes it a little bit difficult for the pencil to adhere to it. But what the magic eraser does is it scuffs up the surface and so you are able to go right back over where you lifted it and redraw without too much trouble. And so I'll have to rebuild all that off camera and you'll see it in the how I made that nose in the upcoming guidebook. Keep on practicing. And of course, you don't have to take 
your practice work to a finished drawing, take out a sheet of scrap and practice your pencil pressure and the different ways in which you can hold your pencil and still get the results that you're looking for. And again, practice, practice, practice. Bye.